I wish I could just go to work instead of waiting for Jamie. That's my third cup. Hydration is key. Well, Jamie said he was going to get on. He had to take a quick phone call three and a half hours ago. So I've had four cups of coffee. I went to have lunch. I've grown a beard. Grow a beard. <laughs> Shane. Shane, look at this. Hey, guy. look. Doesn't he look like he shouldn't be allowed within 100 yards of a school? <laughs> <laughs> now we'll go. Jamie Lima, please report to the photo booth. Jamie Lima, report to the photo booth so that we can get some shit done today. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he didn't even hear the page. Hey, oil pump and can play for M8s, video number two. Why? Cause shit has changed. Cause shit has changed. Cause shit has changed. And you need to know about it. Let's go. Well, Jamie, as a matter of fact, we are gonna learn today, because learning is power. Whoa, power. And we like power. So we actually have all the generations of the Harley pumps here, since they've made a lot of revisions, and you like hear all over the place that there's like eight revisions, 10 revisions, nobody knows how many they've made. They've actually made four different revisions to the oil pumps, and there are some easy ways to identify them. The first oil pump, had this slot where the relief valve is, and the numbers end in like a one, two, two. The scavenge port from the uh, crankshaft is very large. This design was only in the very first uh, M8 motorcycles from probably August of 16 till like maybe October or November. By that time the winter rolled around, they'd already realized that they needed to make some changes. So they came out with revision number two, which as you can see, they made the kidneys sh more shallow. They took away the slot and made an actual relief porthole. They didn't change anything on the inlet side. Then from there, they went to revision number three. Now, in re revision number three, they made a couple of different changes to it, but it was still the same part number, so they were running changes. And these are the 170 or 180 series pumps. It's got a slanted relief port. It still has the more shallow kidneys, and they made the port for the scavenge pickup inside the crank compartment much smaller. They also made some changes to the backing plate during those times. This was the backing plate that was stock and fit all the oil pumps up until 2019 when through Harley's research and development they found that if you put a seal against the crankcase it actually helped decrease the ability to or the uh, problem of cavitation and air cavitation is the phenomenon that they think causes something in the engines when right. air gets inside the gyrotor it won't move the oil anymore so this helped reduce that significantly then in 2020, they redesigned the oil pump completely and came out with this bad boy that's now in all the stock in all the motors now. Uh, on the feed side, there weren't a lot of changes, but on the scavenge side, they redesigned the kidney shapes and they redesigned the gear itself. So the gear on the 2020 is smaller than the gear on the, sub, on the previous models. It also has eight teeth instead of 10, and you can see how much bigger the uh, pickup sections on the teeth are so that it can pu push more oil through the pump, even though it's a smaller size. They retained the seal on the backing plate, and you can tell if this pump is installed in the engine by this little ear mark right here. You can see this in the case with the pump installed and the cam plate installed. You see this little tab right here on the bottom and you know that that's the most current version of the oil pump. Now, this backing plate 
And these, this pump is not compatible with any previous models, but this will retrofit as a whole unit into the previous models. This one now is standard in 2020 M8. So if you have a 2020 mile M8, you have the newest pump. If you're doing upgrades to your motorcycle, your Harley Davidson, and you don't have a 20, you have a 17 or an 18, we recommend going to the newest style pump. You don't have to go to an SNS or a Fueling. You can go to this one. The SNS and Fueling have some benefits we're going to go over in a minute. Right. That's why we recommend them. But you can go to the newest version of the Harley pump and have the best oiling system that Harley's produced for these new M8 motors in your bike. So the next we have is fueling. Now we use fueling and SNS quite a bit in our builds. A lot of it comes down to preference. You know, some people like fueling better than SNS. Some people like SNS better than fueling. Either one of them is going to be an increase in capacity over the OEM version. Neither one of them are a make or break item. To, to have your motorcycle continue to run. But if you're going to do a big inch motor, it's a good idea to increase the capacity of the heart. And something we've noticed is we've had some customers install or other shops install these into their bikes and they didn't check run out of their pinion side of their flywheel. Yeah. And it caused significant damage to the pump and plate. So there are specifications, which are 5,000 yeah. run out of your pinion side of your flywheel if you want to install these. If you don't spec out for one of these, you can't put it in. It doesn't fit every single M8 because there are all tolerances for where the pinion side is going to be pushing your gears through the pump and through your cam plate. And if the tolerances are excessive, it will wear and gouge the plate and pump and, themselves. And it can damage the flywheel, which we've seen too. And the biggest reason that it can cause damage if the runout is excessive is because they use billet aluminum you know, the, the fuelings are made of 7075, and I believe the SNS is 7075 with bronze bushings that they ride on. Whereas I'm not sure the parent material that the aluminum is made out of in the stamped OEM cam plate, but I know it is not billet aluminum. The testing and everything on this pump for what the motors Harley's producing is adequate enough to handle the extra heat and everything going through the larger motors. Now, when we go to a bigger cam, our ported heads, you're throwing a little more heat into the motors. We're getting a little more RPMs on them. These pumps with the extra volume are gonna help keep the temperatures of the motor down while they're running. So for OEM stock setup of motors, perfect. For Harley's camshafts that they have designed for them, they work great. If we're going beyond that, that's when we really look at this guy. But when you're, when you're pushing the 140, 150 horsepower mark like we do, the pressure on the flywheels is much greater because of the downforce that you're creating. So the, the uh, more robust material, the aluminum that these are made out of, helps keep everything more rigid inside the case than, than the uh, OEM plate does. One of the big advantages to the fueling plate, and this is kind of shared with both of them, is the, the holes are matched to the case. If you see the size of the holes, of the feed holes on the uh, OEM versus the fueling, and the SNS, the OEM is within a certain tolerance, but it is not matched to the size of the port in the, in the actual engine compartment itself, where these companies have gone through the trouble to make sure that the passages are identical. So there's no wasted space, there's no blockage in the flow because you know, you're trying to go from a big hole to a small hole in these plates. There are three different pumps and plate combinations for fueling, but we only really run the race series so that's the only one we're going to go over this is the fueling's basically big dog and it boasts 42 percent more scavenging um, partly due to the matched oil passages and because of the increased size of the gerotors and 68 percent more oil to the crank and connecting rods than the oem ones and one of the one of the rumors out there is that the connecting rods run tight and they burn up because they're, they're set to a tighter tolerance than they have been in the past. So the fueling pump is excellent for helping to alleviate that by putting more oil pressure and capacity to the connecting rod and the bearings on the bottom end. They have two inch high flow chrome molly gerotor gears. So they're extremely strong and robust compared to the stock. If you take the 2020, or the earlier versions, and then you look at the fueling, there's no comparison. 
They also have larger and deeper kidney ports, so it can pull more oil in reserve so that you, you have more fluid available to push because they're pushing at such a higher rate. And they come with magnets installed to help pull any kind of debris or metal that may be in the oil and stick it to the pump so it doesn't go inside the pump and then through the system. Their pressure relief is set to a full pop-up at 65 PSI. Next, we got the blue guy, s, s Performance. This pump is a very good pump. There's a couple things we go over to in these is when you debox your pumps, the first thing you need to look for is make sure you have the right one. We've had all kinds of cases because there are two different M8s. There's an oil-cooled M8 and then there's a water-cooled M8 and they take different gears. So on the OEM application, you can see the differences in the gears Mike has here for you. This guy right here is a factory oil pump that Harley's putting in that's pushing for your oil-cooled motor. So this is basically anything that's a non-trike, non-limited, non-roguelite ultra, or now you have a roguelite limited is gonna be running this guy. If you have a trike or you have a limited, roguelite ultra or roguelite limited now, you're getting this guy. And the difference is, is the oil-cooled heads of an oil-cooled motor have more oil through them, so there's more pressure needed. We need more push to go through that motor. Therefore, we need the extra volume through it. This guy, the motor's being cooled and the heads are being cooled by water. So since we don't have to supply the extra oil through the oil cooler into the heads, we don't need the larger gear to handle that. All right, and on the pump from s, s they've marked it just in case you get some mixed package. First thing you should do when you get it out, you see this guy right here on the pump? That's an O, that's for oil cooled. If it's a water cooled pump, this is gonna be a W. So if you're doing this yourself or you're another shop out there doing it, just double check this, make sure you have the right one. That way there's not a, a problem later down the road. All right, so s, &S similar to the fueling, you have 44% more flow on the supply side. With that happening, they also have increased the flow on the scavenger side to have 58% more on the scavenging side, okay? A little different setup on the s, s compared to the fueling. These are the biggest differences between these two pumps is they have independent scavenging sections for flywheel and cam chest where it's two gears running it instead of the one. And that's the biggest difference between these two pumps because a lot of them, a lot of the stuff are very similar on what we're doing in the motor, but s, s believes this is a better setup. Fueling likes this setup a little better. All right, just like anything else, s, s has the debris screens in the pump to catch anything. Like Mike said on the fueling pump, there's a magnet here and a magnet here just to catch any debris that might happen in the cam chest as the motor's wearing. Throughout the life of the motor, this will catch stuff. And, and some of the particles are, are super tiny. Super fine. Super fine. I mean, when, when we pull these out and we dig them, it's like a paste. Yeah. It's like a really fine paste. And these guys are picking those up and that's extra protection as your motor's going through 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. The more it can pick up here, the more it's gonna save you through the services of the motor later down the road, all right? The factory PSI on the s, s pump, the fueling set at 65, s, &S is, is set at 45 PSI. And we don't mess with them. Even our big motors, 150 horsepower, 150 torque, and plus, we're not messing with the setup that it comes from the factory. So no, it, it, if you feel that the oil pressure is low at idle, please resist the temptation to start adjusting the PSI. It, you can change it super quickly and it won't change very much at idle, but what'll happen is you can go from 45 to 90 PSI at 2,500 RPMs with just one stroke of your Allen wrench. And then you're putting so much pressure, it's pushing oil through the gaskets. And I think that's one of the biggest complaints I've heard about this. This pump is too much pressure going through the pumps. But in every case that I've actually been able to talk to somebody, they've adjusted the pressure because they felt that idle, it was low. Resist all urges. <laughs> One more time, resist yes. all urges to touch this. Resist yes. all urges. Resist yes. all urges. Resist all urges. We haven't had to mess with a single one in every motor setup we have. And s, &S recently, they've updated their, their uh, pumps as well to incorporate the seal. It does take the OEM seal, if you like it. It's not something that's necessary for the pump to function, but uh, you know, s, s has worked closely with Harley-Davidson for a lot of years, and Harley-Davidson does so many millions of dollars of R&D. If Harley feels like this is a good idea, then s, s put it as an option, and their pumps are currently all coming with the option to put this seal on. 
And you, that's an OEM part. I'm sure that Comedic or somebody's making them by now, but. Now to go back over that, if you've already installed this SNS pump in your bike, it's not necessary to change. It might not have this. SNS believes that it is better to have it. So now that they've done the testing and it's in there, awesome. We haven't had any problem in any of the motors that we've installed the SNS pump in that did not come with the seal. This is a change in their design after the fact because it is mimicking what Harley's doing, but we have not had a single problem. All the ones we do from now on will have the seal though. So I also have set up on uh, this bike that we're doing a 128 on right now, a, uh, the tool to measure pinion shaft runout. So the specification so, on the runout is 0 0.005, which is 5 thousandths runout. And that's the variation of what you get at the very end of the pinion shaft there, which Mike's going to go over right now. Come around the table, kids. <laughs> I, I, re I highly recommend getting a tool, an actual tool for it. It's the most accurate way to do it. Fueling makes a great one. Uh, you can get it through most likely any of the uh, suppliers or from fueling themselves. But you install it after the cam chest is empty, zero the gauge, and if you'll see as he spins the, we're at four thousandths on this. So that's well within the five thousand spec. And I think that's pretty much it. We're gonna build this big boy, see what it does. Jamie wanted the Sasquatch to be in this video so it kind of stays true to the first one. I killed that motherfucker, man. <laughs> he, was, he was talking some mad shit and I was like, not today, Satan. And I ran that bitch over with my forerunner. <laughs> Bye, Sasquatch. <laughs>